Hello everyone and welcome back to Taito Ecology and today we are not going to be checking in on Fernville our rainforest biome or not Kansas our grassland biome even though there's very exciting things going on in both of them right now. In Fernville we have our jaguars roaming around hopefully not killing off our ocelots. We were having a little bit of an issue losing some ocelot populations last time in Fernville but hopefully things are going okay. We added in tons and tons of frogs and what I like to consider the great frog and ant and moth experiment to see if they can make a awesomely huge foundation to our food pyramid that we've got going on in there and then we have not Kansas which is full to overflowing with mice right now so there's a ton of mice we threw in a lot of snakes and crossed our fingers and we're gonna see if that sorts itself out but we're actually going to be working over in a brand new biodome today and we're going to look into the third and the last of the different types of environments we can use the desert biome we have not yet had anything in the desert biome so this is really exciting and it's been so fun to see how many of you guys are like yes Siri desert I love cactuses so we're gonna be looking at the cacti and it's gonna be pretty awesome it looks like there's oh I see the little snake I see snakes I see tortoise I see something I see mushrooms, and I have not peeked at all, so I have no idea what's going to be in here. All right, deserts may be extremely hot and dry, but plenty of plants and creatures call the desert their home. Create an ecosystem with plants and animals from the Mojave Desert in North America. That's very exciting. I've noticed, actually, I think that all of these, like South America, North America, very interesting to me that there's two North American biomes, and they're in Celsius. <laughs> that just cracks me off for some reason. But yeah, uh, let's just go ahead and dive on in. All right, constructing the dome holes. All right, and we're gonna have Pyrite Canyon. And Pyrite is fool's gold, and I thought that would just be a great name for this canyon. And this is gonna be so exciting. Okay, all right, here it is. All right, we've got our tiny, it's so tiny. It's so small when we start. I always forget how small it is. There's zero hit points in it because there's nothing here yet. So let's take a little peek, you guys, at what we can add in. Okay, joint fur, big sagebrush. So we've got, let's see, can I, can I look at them? Joint fur, big sagebrush, the honey mesquite that we have in the grasslands biome too. And let's just start unlocking everything. So here's this bush. We've got this bush here. We've got, oh, beaver tail cactus. <gasps> I want to see the beaver tail cactus. Ah, they're so cute. Look at them, beaver tail cactus. We've got some galata grass. All right, and it looks like it adds in five or oh, 10 of them. I get it now. It adds in 10 individuals. I get it. All right, we've got some more grass over here. Very, very nice. We have barrel cactus. Oh, let's unlock all of these desert spoons. Desert spoons. They look kind of like the agave. Oh, tiny little barrel cactus. Oh, speak of the devil. Here's the agave. <laughs> So there's the agave. We have the desert willow. Wow, there's a lot of plants for the desert. <gasps> These guys, I don't know how to pronounce them correctly, but they're gigantic cactuses. Apparently they get really, really big. The saguaro, I'm going to have to figure out how to pronounce those, but there's birds that will specialize in making nests inside of these guys, which is really, really, really cool to me. All right, the sweet acacia. Here's the desert willow. There's a lot of plants for this being the desert. And there's the Joshua tree. Yay! And we just got the rewards for unlocking everything. Wow. So there's some big, big, like, actual plants we can put in here. Quick peek at our decomposers, millipedes, and mushrooms. And then finally, our awesome animals. Armadillo, king snake, rattlesnake, badger, bobcat, deer mouse. Oh, those guys breed so quickly. Moth, jackrabbit, ant, honeybee, cougar, colored peccary, coral snake, kangaroo rat, marine blue butterfly, desert tortoise, proghorn antelope, coyote, and mule deer. All right. So in this case, it looks like mostly the coyote is going to be our carnivore here and we've got the coral snake let's just go ahead and unlock all of these guys and the desert tortoise so yeah the coyote and the mule deer now this is going to be interesting because i was wondering yeah it doesn't look like there's going to be really oh, i mean the bobcat is a carnivore so it's going to be the smaller level stuff this time you guys all right Yay! All of the all of the animals. Oh, oh, do I need to go and like get the? I think I forgot. Do you have to go in and like get the rewards from inside here? Achievements, and then ah, yeah, look at that. Okay, so we need place three producers in the desert to get the green thumb for the desert. How fun! Look at all of this. 
Oh my gosh! Unlock all the grassland animals, unlock all five biodome zones, have a mule deer die of old age. Wow! I didn't even know these things! Tame tortoise, have a desert tortoise reach maturity. Apparently that's an achievement, so let's let's immediately grab a desert tortoise. Because now I'm curious how long it would take to have a desert tortoise reach maturity. So let's put this little guy down. And let's see. Uh, yeah, the lifespan is maxed out. Desert tortoises are herbivores. They eat fruit, seed, leaves, and other plant matter. All right, so let's go ahead and make sure we have some plant matter in for them right now before I start feeling really guilty. This guy produces a lot of fruit and a lot of leaves, so we'll put him in here. And then let's get some grass. Ooh, some barrel cactuses, because they're so cute. Barrel cactuses, beaver tail cactuses, go. And then let's see. Ah, out of stuff. All right, and we're running low on our terra coins. Because I just bought all of those animals, so we'll have to be a little bit careful, but all right, let's put that down I want to make sure our desert tortoises have things to eat um, Yay green thumb sweet and then let's see. I need to put down some plants Okay, whoop there we go. All right. There's those those big leafy plants and then what about just some simple desert spoons? I'm looking for uh, here's some joint first. I'm actually trying to look for like, yeah, the grasses, like things like this, just simple grasses to add in. Now, this is really interesting because a lot of people think the desert is this and often the desert can be this or even more lush areas, but you'll end up with a lot of plants just kind of going, mm, kind of going into sort of like a heat hibernation and I'm sure there's a more technical term for that where they're just not going into leaf they're not really putting a lot of energy into growing um when it's the dry seasons and then like the wet season will roll around and things will start changing because the water will hit the ground and the plants will just go absolutely nuts and very excited and will do everything they can to grow as quickly as possible in that brief bit of time when they actually have access to a lot of energy all right, and let's go ahead and maybe put some more grass over here. So there we go. We've got our little desert tortoises. Let's read a little bit more about them. They are the very first things we've added in here because I saw that it's an achievement to let one get to like uh, old age or like full maturity. All right, can I put any more, any more grass over here? Oh, I can. I just have to be, yeah, this is looking so good. Oh my gosh, little desert tortoise. It's like a work of art over here for you. I love it. It's so nice. So you're coming over, look at him. He's going to eat this. He's going to eat this little bush. You are so adorable. You're so cute. You're so cute and photogenic. You know that? In fact, there we go. Save that little picture. Cute little desert tortoise walking on by. All right, we'll have to see. All right, let's look up some more facts about them really quickly. As adults, desert tortoises have very few predators. Only cougars are able to crush their hard shell. While tortoises are juveniles, however, they are much more vulnerable. Their shells are softer, which allows animals like coyotes and bobcats to prey on them. Young tortoises rely on camouflage to stay hidden from predators. If a desert tortoise feels that it is under attack, it will empty its bladder in defense. Good to know. So be careful when you pick one up. They might be like toads and they'll pee on you. Uh, desert tortoises only live in the desert. The desert tortoise can be found in the southwestern United States and northwestern Mexico. The desert tortoise has long claws and powerful front legs, which makes it an expert digger. Desert tortoises live in underground burrows that may be quite large and house several rooms inside. It is estimated that more than 90% of a desert tortoise's life is spent resting in its burrow. So imagine that, and that actually reminds me a lot of the gopher tortoise that is very important to a lot of areas, especially down in Florida as where I'm most familiar with hearing about them. And the gopher tortoise is another powerful digger and it'll just dig and dig and dig and dig. And those burrows that it makes is actually a very important environment for not just the desert tortoise or the gopher tortoise in this case, but also all sorts of different animals like snakes, a lot of rattlesnakes, a lot of small mammals, a lot of um, your birds will kind of scurry down in there, especially during forest fires and stay out of the way of trouble or danger or have somewhere to nest. And the tortoise will just completely ignore it and then if it's a snake, like I think it's in the BBC's Planet Earth documentary, maybe, or, or like reptiles, one of the two. The, either the Life in Cold Blood, I think it's Life in Cold Blood actually, you can see the gopher tortoise digs out this big old burrow and there's this gigantic rattlesnake that is sharing its burrow with it and they're totally fine, they just ignore each other completely. I think at one point the tortoise in the documentary just walks on top of the snake and the snake is just like, <sighs> but ignores him. So that was really cool. All right, we'll add this in. Now, what would be an interesting challenge, and I know it's not here uh, in this in this world, but what would be an interesting challenge would be to have the um, the water scarcity. 
cause us to have to think even more carefully about what plants to add in and where to add them in. But I don't think we have to worry about water scarcity, so I have a feeling, in typical Siri fashion, we're going to have extremely lush and gorgeous deserts here in Pyrite Canyon. And then, let's see, maybe a big desert sagebrush. Can I put it right here? But it would look so good just right here. Why? And you do have to think carefully about where you put things, because as soon as you put something down, you can't really move it right now. All right, let's see. Can I stick this anywhere? Right there. There we go. All right, so now that we've got all of these plants down, we're going to need some pollinators. So let's make sure we've got some moths. Uh, maybe this marine blue over here. They're very tiny. And then let's try adding in some kangaroo rats. I didn't know kangaroo rats were native to North America. I have no problem with admitting this. Let's see. Uh, they live only in deserts. Desert kangaroo rats are native only to the hottest, driest, lowest regions of southwestern North America. Though these animals are called kangaroo rats, they are neither rats nor kangaroos. Their large back feet make them hop like kangaroos, and they are more closely related to pocket mice than rats. There used to be an Australian animal called the desert kangaroo rat, but it is now extinct. Oh, that's kind of sad. All right, and then let's see. Diet. Seeds make up a large part of the kangaroo rat's diet. They do not like to eat succulent plants like cacti or agave, but will eat leaves of plants like the uh, chrysotie bush. When you're as small as a kangaroo rat, you have a lot of predators to worry about. Snakes, birds, foxes, bobcats, and just about every other meat eater out there will make a meal of you. They often store seeds they find in their cheek pouches and then bring them back to their burrows to save for later, which is adorable. Oh my gosh. All right, so we'll add in a couple populations of kangaroo rat. And then give him give him some more food. He needs more food, so he's not a fan of the agave type things. Ah! Alright, so and we need to get some millipedes in, because we're getting poop. We've got some poop problems coming down. So millipedes and do 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 the mushrooms to the rescue, as usual. Then we're gonna put in a bunch of grass. And Pyrite Canyon seems to be going pretty good so far. I like the name. The name is intended to kind of be a spin on um let's come down here on fool's gold. Wow, there's a lot of those little mice. Um, we might need a predator soon. <laughs> so I don't want to put a predator down that could threaten our desert tortoises just yet. So let's go ahead and put in, hmm, maybe some ants too. And I'll have to see if the ant population is going to be completely destroyed from the kangaroo rats or not. <gasps> Look at my little desert tortoise. There he goes. He's so cute. Uh, let's put in, hmm, Let's focus for now on, oh yeah, we've got a little money, on adding in a rattlesnake. Why not? First thing we'll put in is big old rattlesnakes. So they can come on in and make sure to keep this population of mice in check. And it might be interesting to see how many, like, hmm, how many snakes can we have? You can have a max of four snakes here. And the rattlesnakes actually do have territories, just in case you guys didn't know that. I remember reading an article about a scientist whose main job was to track uh, big female rattlesnakes and to see what it was like when they managed their territories and the results were amazing and basically the information that he found out showed that the most important thing you can do is leave the bigger rattlesnakes especially the females alone because they are more successful they're usually more experienced and they stay away from human habitats more so than other like younger varieties of rattlesnake do because the younger guys don't know yet to stay far, far away from the troublesome humans. Look at our little rattlesnake. He thinks he's a sidewinder. He's so cute. All right. And let's see. What else should we add over here? Maybe armadillo? I don't think I have nearly enough insects to support an armadillo population. All right. And then how many populations did I put down of the deer mice or kangaroo rats? Two. Man, look at this. There's not a lot here yet. Maybe I should put something big in and then work around it like we sometimes do. <gasps> Speaking of something big. Come on, where's that cactus? Where's the big... Oh, there he is. Oh my gosh. Yes. Perfect. Perfect. I love it. I want to put it here. There we go. Look at how awesome this guy is. I can't wait to learn more about cactuses. This is actually making me want to work on cactuses in our zoo tycoons or in our zoo crafting series. All right. Um, maintain your biome. Whoa, you get an achievement for maintaining your biome for 10 years. That is so cool. Have an agave plant grow from a baby until it blooms in your biodome. Oh, I guess the desert biodomes must just take a long, long, long time. Whoa, bicentennial. Maintain your biodome for 200 years. 
I guess if your biodome completely dies, like, do you have to start over? Because I think when our biodome technically died, when we had um, everything die because there was too much poop back in Fernville way back when, did it count as it all dying? I'm not sure. All right, and I actually need to unlock the next zone, I think. Let's go ahead and confirm that. Because that gives us a boost to being able to get 50 more energy when we're working around here. So that's a good thing. All right, maybe Desert Willow? We can try out putting down some of the other plants. Let's see, Desert Willow. I sort of want to keep this really cool look of just having lots and lots of little cactuses and a lot of grasses though. I do think it's fun to cluster all these tiny barrel cactuses around the big ones. All right, maybe some of these like leafy plants spread out quite a bit. All right, and let's grab. I just love the look of the grasses too. There we go. Good little leaf plants. That should keep the little kangaroo rats quite happy. Hopefully there's enough to keep them happy elsewhere too. There, and it's a slow start, but it's an interesting start. So how long does it take for the tortoise to go from juvenile to what the game considers full age? I'm really curious now. Let's see. Both male and female desert tortoises will mate with several other tortoises. A female, a female's body can delay pregnancy for several months once she has mated. Very useful if you are a slow-moving creature who probably doesn't see a lot of your own species. There's a lot of reptile species that will actually uh, retain, like the gametes from having mated with one of their own species for many, many months or even longer at a time. Frog species, gecko species are able to do it where they don't have to worry about like having babies right away, but they take advantage of being able to mate with another member of their species when they bump into them when the, there's a high likelihood that they don't see many of their same species out there. So that's, that's kind of cool. All right. This means that some desert tortoises will mate, hibernate for several months, then become pregnant when the hibernation is over. Females usually lay about five eggs. Only five? That's not very many, you guys. And will breed twice per year. Desert tortoises can live for a very long time, but only if they reach adulthood. Most desert tortoises die before they reach maturity. If a desert tortoise does manage to reach maturity, which can take about 20 years, <laughs> I'm going to have to stare at my little desert tortoises for 20 years? Odds are that the tortoise will live to be at least 50. Some tortoises live even longer. Oh, well, that answers my question, doesn't it? Okay, so it says 165 days until reproduction, but I don't know what to think about that because like 20 years, I mean, if they're going to they're gonna make me sit here for 20 years before my, my tortoises give me that achievement, then that's a, that's a good long range goal to have. I'm not going to complain. I like having, I like having goals in my life. Long range ones are fine. I just didn't expect it to be that long. Wow, that's pretty awesome. All right, well, we'll make sure we have lots and lots of bushes. I'm trying to kind of spread it out. It's sort of hard because it's just like, do I put more agave or more grass right here? I want more cactuses. You know what? When in doubt, I'm going to add in cactuses. <laughs> more beaver tail cactuses, more cactuses of all kinds. There we go. And it's kind of fun to do little clusters. And I imagine that's kind of what it would look like in the desert. I, I kind of want to go to a desert now. Like, go to a desert and vlog about it with you guys. Because this is sort of what I imagine it would be like where you would run into the plants kind of sticking close to one another because of just the way that they would they would spread, the way they would pollinate, the way that their their species would spread. Oh, there goes there goes I think oh I don't think this I don't think this kangaroo mouse is long for this world, you guys. Just just a hint. I'm pretty sure this is gonna be over pretty soon. Look at the snake, this is so cool. This is some good snake action going on here. There we go, save. Where the heck are those pictures hiding? I cannot find them still. All right, let's see. And let's come up here. And it's just empty wasteland and a mushroom. I have to admit, I have never seen a desert mushroom. I'm going to have to look this up and see if something like that even exists. Uh, just, just being honest there. I don't know if desert mushrooms actually exist, so that'll be really cool to see if they do. All right, and then let's add in some more ants, I think, just to kind of get that baseline started with having lots and lots of ants. And the poor little ants, I don't want them to have to go too far to find food. So I'll kind of sprinkle a little bit of food over here. here have more beaver tail cactuses. When in doubt, add cactuses. That's our new life policy. All right, there we go. I mean, it's kind of like when life gives you lemon, lemons, like make lemonade. Uh, when life gives you a desert, plant beautiful cactuses. See, motivation everywhere. 
All right. Oh, and we got a little bit of money. Sweet. We're going to get so much money now that we have three biomes. What kind of biome thing? Ah, what? No, it's reached level two. I need more. I need more. Millipedes, go. Go, millipedes, go. There's too much poop. I need your help, millipedes. All right. Well, we'll have to see if we're able to keep the uh, levels down. I guess I need more, more desert mushrooms. Bring on the desert mushrooms. I'll put some down here too. I guess it's the, the kangaroo rats. They would poop a lot, I suppose. All right, we'll put in more earthworms or millipedes, excuse me, so that we can try to make sure we keep that under control. So yeah, there's more mushrooms. All right. Well, you guys, I think this is good for now. We're just gonna have to trust in our beautiful, beautiful desert biome to sort of maintain itself. And hopefully we, hopefully we did right and man, you know, I just can't get over how at first you're like, oh, you know, it's okay to like zip around in, in little Albot mode. And at first you're like, yeah, it's, it's just whatever. But then the more I do this, the more we add in and the more we watch as our biomes continue to grow like week after week, it gets a little addicting to pop in here and to just like bask in how awesome and cute and beautiful it is and stumble upon animals you didn't expect to find. It's really nice. And look at this. They have a mushroom. They have a little mushroom. I love it. They have a mushroom in their little ant nest. It's so cute. Oh, all right. And I think things are going okay. Yep. Now it's in a healthy state. So yeah, things are going okay. And we've got our tiny little start to the desert. And we'll continue to take care of Pyrite Canyon next time. So I'll see you guys then. Bye-bye.